Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this absolutely gorgeous scarf. Now I crocheted this entire scarf, the entire thing, including weaving in my ends in under three hours. Now I wasn't rushing, I was just crocheting at my normal speed. I just happened to time myself out of curiosity and there is the proof <laughs> that I did it in under three hours. It is an incredibly simple stitch and when using nice chunky yarn and a big hook, that is the trick to getting it to work up so quickly. So this scarf is crocheted using the Suzette stitch, a very simple, very quick stitch to make up. And in this video, I am going to teach you how to crochet that stitch, how to change color and how to finish your scarf. So I'm going to take a quick moment to run you through what you need if you want to recreate this scarf exactly, but please know you can use any yarn and any hook size for your Suzette stitch scarf. To make this scarf, you're going to need three balls of a super bulky weight yarn. I personally am using the Shapiers Namaste yarn, but you are free to use whatever yarn you like. You're also going to need a nine millimeter crochet hook, a large eye needle, preferably one of these cheapy plastic ones with a big eye because this yarn is pretty thick, a pair of scissors, and just three hours of your time. So for my scarf, I started with the shade Locust and I used this ball until it was all gone. Then I crocheted the rest of the scarf with two balls in the color pigeon. This gives that really funky sort of modern color block effect, but you are free to use any yarn, any hook size that you so wish. Let's begin. To begin, pop a slip knot onto your hook. Now the pattern multiple for the Suzette stitch is very simple. It's just an even number. So you can chain as wide as you want your project to be. Just make sure that it is an even number for the Suzette stitch to work out. Now for my scarf in particular, I chained 16. So that's my 16 chains. Now for this first row, I worked into the back bump of my chains. This is so the little Vs stay facing downwards so the top and the bottom of your scarf, the stitches look the same. This is personal preference. If you're going to add tassels or any extra things to your scarf, you don't really need to worry about going into the back bumps but you've got your V's on the front and the back bumps are these little, little bumps here. These are the bits I'm going to be working into for my particular scarf. And we're going to start by working into the second chain from the hook. Now this loop on your hook doesn't count as anything. You only want to count these fully formed chains hanging down below, so one, two. I'm going to rotate it round so you can see the back bumps, one, two, and that's where I'm going to work. So into the second chain from your hook, I'm going to place a single crochet. Now with such a big hook, you might want to get your finger involved to actually get under. But I'm going to place a single crochet in there. Then place a single crochet into the remaining chains down the row. So just working under those back bumps, work single crochets all the way down. At the end of this first row, you will have an odd number of stitches. So for me, on my personal scarf, I chained 16 to start, and now I'm working these single crochets. I will have 15 single crochets at the end of this row.
Row two is the start of the Suzette stitch rows. Suzette stitch is very simple. It is just a one row repeat. So we're going to repeat this row all the way until the end. So to do the Suzette stitch, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Now into that very first stitch, so where you just chained from, that's the little chain we made, into this stitch right here, we're going to work a single crochet and then work a double crochet into that exact same stitch. Skip a stitch and into the next, work a single crochet and a double crochet. Skip a stitch and into the next single crochet and then double crochet. We're going to repeat this, skip a stitch and into the next single crochet and a double crochet. Skip a stitch and then single crochet and double crochet into the same place. Now, once you reach the end of the row, you will have two stitches remaining. To end the row, skip a stitch and work one single crochet only into that very end stitch. So you're ending on just one single crochet stitch. So again, chain one, turn your work into that very first stitch where you just chained from, work a single crochet and a double crochet into the same place. Skip a stitch and into the next, which will be your single crochet from the row below. Do the same, single crochet and double crochet. Skip a stitch and into the next will always be the slightly smaller of those two. You can see my double crochet is a bit longer. It's a smaller stitch here. It's a single crochet. So skip a stitch and into that next one, single crochet and double crochet. Skip a stitch, single crochet and double crochet into the next. Keep going, skip a stitch, single crochet, followed by a double crochet into the same spot. And keep working that all the way along, skipping a stitch, and then single crochet and double crochet into the next. Skip, single, and a double, and then to end, when you have two stitches left, skip one and end with just a single crochet as your last stitch. So you're going to repeat this row back and forth, back and forth, chain one, turn, begin the Suzette stitch in that very first stitch.
and then when you have two stitches remaining work a single crochet only into that very last stitch so you can see it builds very quickly and you get this lovely texture by using a slightly too large a hook i think this yarn requests a eight millimeter hook and i'm using a nine just to get a bit more drape keep repeating that row and i'll show you how to change color so for my scarf i continued crocheting until I got to the end of this mustardy yellow gold ball of yarn. And then I switched to the pigeon, the cream color for the last two balls to finish my scarf. So I'll show you how you change color. It's always done in the last stitch of the row. It's also the same way you would join a new ball of yarn for when you want to add in your second ball of the cream yarn. So the method is the same. So I'm reaching the end of my row here and I only have two stitches left, which means I'm ending on one single crochet. So I'm going to change color in that very last stitch. So because it's a single crochet, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, draw through a loop. And then when I have two loops on my hook, at that point, I'm going to stop. I'm going to drop the gold yarn and I'm going to bring in my new yarn, my cream. Leave a long tail that you can weave in afterwards. Pop that over your hook. Draw it through those two loops to complete that single crochet stitch. Then it is simply a case of continuing on with the Suzette stitch. Just as you have been. That stitch where you just changed colour will open up slightly, but that's fine. You can pull it back down again. And you continue with the Suzette stitch till the scarf is the length that you want it to be. I'm going to crochet a couple more rows in this cream, and then I'm going to show you the very final row, which will end off and give you a nice straight edge that matches the bottom. So I'm just finishing up here, it's my final stitch of the row. And now we are going to imagine that my scarf is the length that I want it to be. So the very final row, we want to be nice and straight so it matches the bottom. And obviously you can see at the top here, it's a little bit of a wavy top edge. So once your project is the length that you want it to be, the very final row we're going to do is going to be a single crochet row, just to neaten and square everything off. So we're going to chain one and turn. Then work a single crochet into that very first stitch where you just chained from. And we're going to pop one single crochet into each stitch along. So under each stitch, work a single crochet just single crochets to every single stitch now i had 15 single crochets in my beginning row from my chain of 16 and i therefore know i will have 15 single crochet stitches worked into the top along here so if you need to count them just to make sure you're staying on track you will have one two three four five six seven eight nine, 10, I should have 15. If I haven't, we're in trouble. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14. And then that very final stitch, stitch 15. Phew, that was lucky. <laughs> so now you will have like a nice straight edge that mirrors the straight edge of the bottom. And then to finish, your very final stitch, you're just going to chain one, snip your yarn, leaving a nice long end to weave in, pull that up, pull it tight, and your scarf is nearly complete. Now at this stage, if you want to go ahead and add some tassels or additional 
fringing or whatever you want to add to the end you absolutely can I left mine with nice just square edges I didn't add any extra bits afterwards so therefore the last step for me is to weave in my ends now because this is quite a chunky roving type yarn where I changed color from the gold to the cream and if you then have gone on to add your second ball of cream afterwards I just like to do a little knot where just gently you don't want to distort your stitches just a knot to secure that down now if this wasn't this sort of loose fluffy roving type yarn I wouldn't knot it but just to be on the safe side knot it and then you can grab your large eye needle and you can weave in your ends so I'm literally going to take my cream yarn and I'm going to run it I follow the stitches themselves back down so you are free to take your time and be a little bit more gentle and careful than I am with this and then I like to hide it underneath some of the stitches that come back on myself I'm always quite gentle I don't want to pull too tightly and you definitely want to have a nice long tail because if you're going to be using this scarf you're going to want to put it through the wash or you're going to get a lot of wear to it so you don't want to have a really short little tail that then will eventually pull out and poke out so then I like to come back over I've just popped out here I like to go back over the top and then come back in it's sort of going in different directions to really secure that little tail down and go back again I'm skipping over the stitch I just came out from and then you can run it off down or wherever you want to and you want to do this for every single yarn end that you have you won't have many if you're using the same yarn and following my colorway but you will have some so you want to run them off down and the same with your other yarn ends and of course the one you started with so you want to securely stitch all of these in And once your yarn ends are securely woven in, I mean, take them as far as you possibly can. You can snip them off. And your scarf will be complete. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you love both this big fat yarn and the Suzette stitch as much as I do. If you found this video helpful, please do give me a big thumbs up and until next time, happy scarf wearing. <laughs> Bye.